before I get into this, let me go ahead and give you some important backstory. A good friend of mine and I were on the western coast of Florida hanging out, specifically the Gulf Coast. We were having a great time. We had found this great secluded spot right there along the shoreline where nobody else was, and were drinking, enjoying the sun. After all, it was a very warm day in April, so we're just sitting there, lost in whatever conversation we were having, when my friend looks over at the water because he hears something. He then turns his attention towards the water. I follow after, and we both see it. Suddenly, I saw the water churn and I heard a deep, guttural noise. I see this huge green creature with spines all over it shooting up out of the water. It had a long tail and a big head with a very wide mouth. This thing jets up out of the water, running right for us, like a man in a swamp monster costume. It was crazy. This thing was something you can't even imagine. It honestly kind of reminded me of the thing of the Black Lagoon, but much uglier. We don't even waste a second. My friend and I just turn around towards the Everglades and start running as hard as we can to outrun this thing. It catches up to us pretty quickly, just due to its immense speed. It was able to not only emerge from the water as quickly as it did, but it was running after us fast. I remember thinking to myself, what is that thing? And I'm running as fast as I can, and my friend is now right behind me. We're running through the thickest parts of the Everglades as fast as we can, hoping this thing cannot catch up to us. It's a pretty long area we were running through, and we were beginning to get tired. I could hear it breathing. Its breaths were loud and deep, and I knew we were not going to be able to outrun this thing forever. I could not force my legs to move faster than they were already going, and I knew that this thing was now following us into the Everglades. I turned around to see what this thing looked like, fully up close, and it was honestly the most terrifying sight. This horrible-looking creature, in much more vivid and unpleasant detail, let me just start off and say nothing about this thing looked nice. It was disgusting, like a cross between toxic waste ooze, a murloc-looking thing, and some sort of amphibious frog mutation. This thing was about ten feet tall from what I could tell. It was huge. It had a long tail with black spines shooting on its back, and it had a large, wide-open mouth, lots of tiny, sharp teeth, tiny little teeth. It had weird little eyes on the top of its head, too, and it had two arms that were about three feet long each, very long, and it had these massive, strange, pincer-type hands. They were only a few fingers, I guess you could call it that, more like appendages. This thing was covered in slimy skin, or maybe scales. I couldn't really tell. It was moving in on us, and fast and I could see that it was getting ready to attack. I didn't know what to do. I looked back at my friend as we're running, and he was just as frightened as I was. I hear this thing make a loud hissing sound, kind of like an insect does. And so here we are, stuck in the middle of the Everglades with this thing. It appeared as if it was going to attack. I just remember my friend and I looking at each other, and so we began throwing rocks at this thing, hoping we could at least stun it or knock it down. I threw one of the biggest rocks I could find at it, and it made a loud thud when it hit the creature right in the head. It didn't appear phased at all. In fact, it only started running directly at us more. We knew we were not going to be able to outrun this thing forever, so we just kept running into the Everglades. I remember being so tired but I had to keep going. It was hot, and I was sweating. I was breathing so heavily, and I was just exhausted. Finally, 
we come upon a big tree that was just kind of standing out from the rest. It was right in the middle of a very small clearing. I could see that this tree was covered in a similar slimy substance that was on this creature. My friend and I, thinking quickly, veered off the path, literally diving and flying into a very small section of brush for cover. I could hear the creature running right toward us. It stopped by the tree and was looking around for us. Because we kind of cut a corner, it did not see that we both dove into this small brush and it could not find us. It was kind of letting off a low growl, kind of like cats do. I was looking up at it through the brush and I could just see how ugly this thing was. You know, it was really frightening and it kept looking for us, making these little clicking noises. It was angry that it could not find us. So my friend and I stayed quiet, stayed in our little section of brush, waiting for it to leave. After what seemed like an hour of waiting, we heard the creature's footsteps move away from us and start looking in different areas. It probably wasn't even an hour, but it sure felt like it. We sat and waited a bit longer to make sure we could not hear it anymore. Finally, we decided to get out of there. We just walked out to that section of brush and started walking in a different direction entirely. We had no idea where we were, and I remember being so scared. It was like the thing was going to start chasing us the moment it knew we were out in the open. I remember this being one of the scariest things that has ever happened to me. I wish I could have got a picture of it with my phone, but I didn't want to take a chance, so I just kept running out there in a different direction. As we're going in this different direction, we began to hear those weird clicking noises, the same ones that this was making, except all around us, as if there were more than one of them. I'm not sure if that explains why there was that strange substance of slime on that tree or what. After that, we decided to just call one of our other friends and have him pick us up. We didn't want to be in the Everglades alone with this thing, or possibly more of them out there. We were both so drained from running, and we just wanted to get back to our car. And after maybe an hour or so of walking out of the way, we eventually make it. Our friends were there waiting for us by the car, just to ensure that we were safe. We explained to them that somebody tried to chase us and hurt us. Of course, that wasn't truthful, but we knew they wouldn't have believed us had we told them this strange thing from the sea came out of the water and chased us on shore into the Everglades. My friend and I and our other friends went back to his house. That's all I kind of remember of that day. But I will never forget the thing I saw that day. I'm not sure if it was an alien or what, but I do know that when I got home, I looked it up and found out that there have been sightings of this creature in the Everglades, but reports are far and few in between. Some call him Crawfish Man. I have never seen anything like it, and I really don't know what it is. I have never been so scared in my life. This thing that was chasing us, it was like it was angry that we were in its territory or home. That's how I kind of internalized it. Either way, just be careful when you're at the beach that you don't piss off the wrong thing and end up in a horror science fiction movie like we did. Just to preface, I'm certain that me and my family witnessed a real-life, living, breathing plesiosaurus. However, I can't be 100% sure. I'll tell you my story and you can be the judge. Back in 2009, I was spoiled with my family vacation to Maui, where we got to go on a small private boat tour where we got to go whale watching. I don't know too much about sea life, but I can tell you, we did see whales that day. But I'm pretty sure we also saw something else that day that not only shocked all of us, but even the tour guide who has done a multitude of tours. This was going on in the early evening hours. There was still daylight, so we could see. 
but the thing that we saw in the evening time was definitely not a whale. It was something else entirely. So my family and I were looking out into the water when we see a large tail fin of a whale. We all got excited at the sight of it when the tour guide pointed in the water a little ways away and asked us, did you guys see that? What is that? We all looked and gasped at what we saw. As soon as that tail fin went underwater, we see another large shape moving in the water, closer to the boat. It looked like a flipping bulbous thing moving around. It was huge. It was easily the size of a small car, but you couldn't really see much details of it from the distance and how much it was above the water. This thing was much closer than the whale and was probably no more than 70 feet at most. Then, we see it lift its head up above the water, and for the first time, we could see much more details. Whatever animal this was had a very long neck and a small head, and as soon as it surfaced, it looked over in our direction and let out this long, drawn-out groan. At first, we all thought it was maybe a large sea serpent or something, but then the tour guide got excited and started telling us that it was indeed a baby humpback whale, and seeing as it was really close to shore, we were able to see its fins and tail. He says that it was a young calf that was coming to shore to feed. Look, the dude's an idiot. I'm sorry, but since when does a baby humpback whale look like a flipping dinosaur? Maybe he was just saying that to try and comfort other people of the boat, like maybe they didn't know. I know it was a long shot, but I was hoping someone in here, in this community, might know something about this. Personally, I wasn't scared. I thought it was like the coolest thing I ever saw, but my family and the tour guide seemed nervous. I know that I'm not the first person to witness this, and I'm sure I'm not the last. There have been many other plesiosaur sightings, and again, like I said, I can't be totally sure. I don't know what this was exactly. After it looked over at us, it quickly retracted its head back down into the water, along with its long neck, and then its large bulbous body disappeared underneath the surface. And that, my friends, was it. I'm really curious to know what this was. I mean, it really looked like a plesiosaur, but I can't be sure. Anyone here have any experience with this or heard about anything like this? I hope it doesn't seem like I'm trolling. I really do have a genuine interest in this. I just wanted to share my experience with the community. Thanks for reading. I was deep out at sea on an Alaskan commercial fishing trip. I had been going out for years at that point, and it was, in some ways, the last frontier for me. It was the one place that I could still find complete solitude. The one place that I could just go be by myself. I didn't have to explain myself to anybody. I could just be by myself and I was so far removed from the rest of the world, I felt like I was on my own planet. In a strange way, it was freeing and I was able to do some of my best thinking out there. The further I got from the rest of the world, the less I felt like I was truly a part of it. But, on this particular trip, things were different. Something was just off, and it was making me feel like I was on edge all the time. The other guys on the boat were fine, but I didn't know them very well. They were all nice, but they all seemed to be a little strange at times. I can never put my finger on exactly what it was. I felt like I was in danger sometimes. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with what we all saw on this trip, but it does make you wonder. This was not my first real fishing trip, and I had been out at sea more times than not. I could have imagined what we had saw that day was this disturbing. It all started with an unusually large catch. We had caught a lot of fish and the trip was shaping up to be a very good one. We had a good amount of fish on board already, and we were pretty excited about the haul. 
The sky was clear, and the weather was fantastic. The fish were biting, and we were all getting along. We were going to be making some good money. It looked like everything was going to be just fine. So, we're there pushing through the water, about an hour away from harbor, when something of a very large size begins to swim by the boat. One of the men on board starts screaming and pointing. We all go rushing towards the port side, and all of our jaws dropped simultaneously. You could just see this incredibly large mass swimming just below the surface. It was very long and very wide. Its head was just barely coming out of the water, and it was swimming at a very high speed. We could see its flippers even moving very quickly underneath, at least the shape of them. They were much larger than the flippers of a whale. I can't over-exaggerate how large this thing was. I mean, it had to be easily over 100 feet in length. Easily. We all just kept looking at each other, looking back at this thing in complete disbelief. We had never seen anything like this in our lives, let alone our fishing careers. We were just in complete shock. The boat, though, was still moving, and we did not want to lose sight of it. We were all scrambling to get our cameras, and get them ready to take pictures, or whatever. Then, this thing sticks its entire head out of the water, and this is when the story gets a little understandably crazy. What we saw, I can't explain in words what this thing was. It was maybe a deep blue color, more dark gray than blue though, I believe, and stared at all of us for maybe five seconds before submerging and diving down into the water and vanishing. A couple of other details that really stuck out to me was that it was covered with some sort of strange-looking scales that I had never seen before. There were dark blotches all over its body and head. Some of them were large. I mean, we were all in shock seeing this. But we knew what we had saw, and it was really hard for us to accept that we actually all saw something like this. None of us had our camera out like we should have because it was just shocking to see something so magnificent. It is certainly the largest sea serpent I have ever witnessed in my life. We were all just in awe. None of us could believe it. I'm telling you, if sea monsters do exist, I had just seen one. If Leviathan does exist, that was it. It was easily the most incredible thing that I have ever seen in my life. I was so overwhelmed that I could not even think. I was dumbfounded. It was an experience that I will never forget for the rest of my life. And you know, I've heard many tales too growing up, being a rookie fisherman, about things like that fishermen had seen out in the waters. You hear it all from ghosts to ghost ships, even UFOs. I had just never imagined that I would bear witness to a colossal-sized sea animal. I was shocked, and I didn't want to tell anybody about it, until... I could at least fully process everything. When you're in shock, I mean, I was witnessing the biggest thing I'd ever seen in my life. I couldn't even think about what to say. So when we got back to the shore, none of us really said anything about it to anybody. I mean, what do you say? What do you say to somebody when you tell them that you saw a 100 plus foot sea serpent swimming around in the ocean? They would probably think you're crazy. So we just kept it to ourselves, and we all went on with our lives. I don't know if I'll ever forget what that creature was, but I will say that it was an incredible experience to behold. I have never seen anything like it before. I can understand why it's so hard to comprehend that something like this actually exists, but it does. I hope you have a wonderful day, and thanks for hearing an old man like me tell his sea tale. I'm not sure if I will ever see something like that again in my life. If I do, I'll let you know. Let me tell you about something that happened to me just a few years ago when I was walking along the pier in North Carolina, just along the coast in a small fishing town. 
I won't name the town, but if you look on a map, it shouldn't be too hard to guess. I'm a huge fan of night fishing, and so these events would occur during the night. Now, I can't say for certain what I encountered was an octopus, but actually something else entirely. It's left me frightened and apprehensive about fishing again at night. Yes, it scared me that badly. Anyway, here it goes. I walked along the pier and looked out at the ocean at night. The sky was an inky black with just a few stars peeking through. A beautiful night sky and scenery. As I'm getting ready to cast my line into the water below, the only real light source being from the moon illuminating the waters, I could just so faintly see the silhouette of what appeared to be a large octopus rising out of the water. At least, I thought it was an octopus at first, but I stand by that it was not. I pulled out my fishing rod, at least pulled it away, and the water became still. I couldn't see the creature anymore. I turned around to see where this thing went, and I see these tentacles slowly sliding the pier with a large fish in its grasp. Now I back up, and these tentacles slide back down. Then, what appeared to be a tentacle-like appendage shoots out of the water, grabs onto my leg, and pulls me down into the black water, and grabs a hold of my chest. And then, what I thought at the time, wrapped its tentacles around me and began to constrict. I felt my ribcage starting to crack, and this thing was now only tightening its grip. I mustered my last bit of strength and pulled a knife out from my pocket, stabbing this thing in what I thought was the eye. The way that had its tentacles positioned around my body, I was fortunate that I had the free room to grab a knife and stab this thing as hard as I could. It immediately released me, and I was able to successfully swim to the surface as fast as I could. I could see that I was no more than 10 feet below the water's surface, so I'm going as fast as I can to swim back toward shore, no more than 30 feet, and I could feel this tentacle thing trying to grab onto my heel to pull me back under. With enough kicking and resisting, I'm able to break free and make it back. Screaming for help wasn't going to get me anywhere. There's no one around. I was out here all alone. I did my best to make it back up to the shoreline, and I could see these things in the water squirming behind me, and saw that it did not quite look like an octopus, at least not like one I had ever seen. Then, I realized that it never had itself wrapped around me like I thought, but only one large tentacle, and what I thought I was stabbing, it was actually just that one tentacle. This was pretty scary. I told this story to a friend of mine who is a lighthouse keeper, and he's pretty much a salty sea dog. He said that creatures like this are usually docile, and that they usually don't attack you unless you threaten them. I explained it to him, though, and he said it's not like an octopus to behave like that, but even he's still unsure. He also said that I must have done something to provoke it. He said that they normally don't attack unless you get too close to them. I'm not really sure what to make of the whole thing myself, if we're honest. It's just one strange occurrence. I'll try and make this as detailed as possible, but also not go overboard. So, I go back to the early 80s when I was 12 years old. I grew up in a small town in the Midwest, and I remember... But one time, my family and I were fishing on a small river. It was myself, my father, my mother, and my two sisters. When the sun began to set, we then decided to leave and go back to our car. Walking along the shore, we made our way back, and as we're walking back on the shore, my father notices, and he says, What's that thing? We all looked up, and we saw it. This large, amphibian-like creature... This thing looked to be about 12 feet long, and it was huge. We all ran for our lives back to the car, with my sisters and mother screaming. It kind of resembled a frog and a fish, 
I don't even know how to begin to describe it, but it climbed up and out of the river, and even tried to come after us. It was scary, to say the least. I remember that it had these strange webbed hands, too. It was a very strange-looking animal. We made it back to the car just in time, as this thing appeared to be staggering around the shoreline of the river. It was very frightening. Look, I've never really told anyone about this besides my wife. I don't know if it was a mutant or what, but it's something I'll never forget. And for a long time afterwards, it really deterred my interest in fishing. I used to practice diving and swimming in the open ocean a lot when I was much younger, in my 20s. Not so much anymore. To conquer my fear of being out in the open water and to help develop buoyancy, balance, and swimming endurance, I was training to go deep diving for my career, so it was well worth the training. I would go out with a team of five other guys, and we would just practice in the open ocean. One time, I was swimming in the ocean, practicing diving, actually, when, out of the corner of my eye, I see this dark humanoid shape that almost kind of jumps up on me and sinks these sharp little teeth into my back. Oh man, it hurt. I'm underwater, so I try not to scream in panic, but this thing or person has a hold of me. I only faintly saw the shape of it as it swam towards me while in the water. Suddenly, it started pulling me down deeper, and I came up to the surface and noticed that what was holding me down was this human-like thing with a torso and arms, but instead of legs, it appeared to have like a fish-like tail, and kind of like a mermaid, but it did not look like a fantasy mermaid. I just had a small glimpse of it because it swam so fast and grabbed at me, but thankfully, I was able to get away. It turns out, one of our team guys, Jonathan, was able to help me and save me. He was just swimming nearby and saw me being dragged down by this thing and attacked me, and so he attacked it. He pulled me up to the surface and helped me get away. When we're all diving in the ocean, we're generally no far apart than maybe what, 30 to 50 yards, so that's why he was able to see. I had a panic attack and had to be pulled back to the boat by Jonathan. He's also a lifeguard, and he saved my life from drowning had this thing held on to me any longer than it had. I was so grateful to him that I offered him a drink at the bar for saving my life. Listen, I know it's probably not much, and I know it's probably not much of a story, but I was nearly drowned and killed by some mermaid creature. I had to have my back bandaged up too because the bite was bad. It looked like a large fish bit into me because it released blood into the water, which we would find out as I'm getting bandaged up on boat. Since I was bleeding so badly, everybody had to get back up onto the boat to keep from attracting sharks. This story is true and I swear to my life, I will never forget that day I was in the water. I'm not going to reveal my name because I like to travel and I don't want to be found. I don't want to be known to the world. Jonathan had supposedly had other encounters with the same mermaid-type creatures before. He said that he's seen a group of them, these same creatures, mermaids, I guess, that live in the open waters right around Mexico in the Gulf. They sometimes come to shore and go into the water, and they like to attack humans. He said he knows that I was lucky to be alive. Their bites are deadly, poisonous, although... I don't recall ever being poisoned, though. His encounter with these things was a little different. He was swimming in the ocean when he was suddenly attacked. These things bit into his leg and even tore it open. He had to get stitches and claimed it was very, very painful. After my encounter, I believe that mermaids do exist. Maybe not in the traditional sense where Disney and fantasy make them out to be these cutesy things, but they are some type of humanoid fish creature that do attack. I can't deny that. I have scars on my back to prove it. In addition, 
There have been reports of Bigfoot sightings in a nearby area on land. Even on the TV show, Destination Truth, Josh Gates and the team investigated a Bigfoot sighting in a swamp. The witness also claimed that a small creature attacked her while she was snorkeling. Any connections there? So, I guess it would not be the first time that people are hearing about these strange creatures in the water, eh? Listen, I'm going to share with you a major traumatic event that happened in my life, where I was convinced I died, but somehow I did not. I was near the brink of death, with how badly I was clawed up and torn. Why my life was spared, I'll never know. One day, when I was just a teenager, I was paddling out in the ocean in Southern California, not too far off from the shore. I was paddling out to the waves on my surfboard when I saw something big swimming in the water. I thought it was maybe a sea lion, but as I got closer, I feared it was a shark. But then I realized it was strange looking and nowhere near either a shark or a sea lion. In fear, I tried to swim away, but it got close to me and it reached out with this strange hand and grabbed hold of me and it had claws. So now I'm holding onto my board, screaming in terror, and this thing opened its mouth to try and bite me, and I could see shark-like razor teeth. I closed my eyes and tried to escape the grasp of this thing, but it had me tightly and was pulling me down in the water. I could see my own reflection in its black, soulless eyes. I accepted I was dead. After accepting that, I let go. I felt myself fall off the board and... This thing pulled me under, and for some reason, I lost complete consciousness. I was convinced I was dead. Then, the next thing I know, I come to, and a lifeguard is giving me CPR on the beach, with tons of people standing around. I had deep, bloody gash marks all up and down my body, with this strange purple ooze coming out of them. My mother was scared, crapless, and crying. I mean... I was a bloody mess. I was taken immediately to the hospital, and they had to sew up all my wounds. It took them days to clean me up. I was told that the police had found my surfboard in the water, and I guess it had a huge bite mark in it. The police claimed that it could have been a shark, but they weren't sure, but that a shark was most likely. They also said that two other kids were attacked by a similar creature in the same area. The kids were also, like me, lucky to survive. I was in the hospital for a few more days after that, followed by many surgeries to kind of help stitch me back together. There were some torn ligaments in me. I never did go back into the water for quite a while after. It was bad enough that, like I said, I had to get surgery. I was scared that I was going to die. The whole thing left me traumatized. I had nightmares about it for weeks afterwards. I never told anybody about what really happened to me in the water. I was always too afraid to talk about it. I never had anybody to tell. So I told my mother that I was attacked by a shark, but I never told her the truth about what had happened. I tried to put the whole thing out of my mind, but it was hard. I would have nightmares. I did not even want to look at the ocean. I had a hard time dealing with what happened. So. I started to see a therapist to help me deal with what had happened, and it took a long time for me to get over it. Eventually, I would start surfing again, but I did not go back to the beach where it happened. I had a hard time dealing with that trauma. I think it really affected me mentally. I tried to go back to school and get on with my life, but even then, I was having a rough time concentrating. I would have day nightmares about it, Waking up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat. I didn't know how to deal with that pain of the attack. I grew up a bit more, went off to college, and got my degree in business. I have a great job now in life, but I still live with those memories of the attack. Of that demon thing that attacked me in the water. It's hard to forget what happened. But I know I eventually will. You know... You're probably the first actual person I've ever sat down and 
opened up to about this traumatic event in full truth. I'm thankful for that. I'm going to get over it. I'm going to get back to the ocean. I'm just going to have to deal with it. I know I can. I'm going to fight through the pain and make myself deal with it. Thank you. I have an interesting sea tale for you that I'm sure you'll probably find interesting, if anything at least. This occurred back in Spain in the early 1900s with a very poor fisherman. This man, whom we'll call John, was fishing in the ocean when he was attacked by a large sea creature. It had come out of the water and leapt onto the boat to eat him, but the fisherman and his catch who he had been fishing for hours, was in a state of exhaustion, and he somehow managed to escape. The creature did not follow him, and he was actually rescued by a passing boat, and made his way back to the village where he had lived. He told the whole story to the villagers, who had never believed in sea monsters, and they laughed at him. John, who was on the verge of losing his livelihood, was ridiculed for his story. But... When the story made its way to the village leader, he ordered a search for the creature, and even offered a reward. When the search party returned, they reported that they had found the creature. But when the leader's best hunter approached the creature, the creature attacked. The hunter was killed, and the rest of the party was forced to retreat. This creature was never found again after that, and John was released. I find this story very interesting to note, because of the details about it, and how John goes in to describe the detail. He described it as being a large fish creature, and also having very large thins and sharp spines. He said the very sight of it alone was terrifying and primordial. It scared him. And this is one of the reasons I believe it is real, because the story is very detailed, and John, who I'm just using as a name because... The fisherman in the story was actually never given a name. He is speaking from experience. John had seen this strange, mysterious creature. This was right off the coast of Portugal, where he was fishing. There's actually another written record I've seen maybe about 30 years before this, around 1860 to 1870, where yet another fisherman describes an almost similar sighting of a creature that he too saw while fishing. While similar in description, this fisherman saw a creature that he described as being very elongated in the head and looked like some sort of strange ancient crocodile, but much, much larger. He described it as being so large that it nearly capsized his small fishing boat, and it swam underneath it. It swam close enough to the surface, though, that he got a good enough view of it, and although it never surfaced, he saw more of it than what he would have liked to. These kinds of things really make you question and wonder. What's really out there in the ocean that we don't know about? It seems like every day, more and more, we're hearing about things like cryptids and strange beings being caught on camera. The sea is already so vast and mysterious as it is. We aren't even aware of half the creatures living in it. And yet... As a collective species, we are so quick to dismiss anything we deem as outlandish, like the megalodon is in fact extinct, or that mermaids don't exist. The sightings that I continue to read, that are well documented from back years and years ago, really make me question just where we are at in our modern day scientific approach to proving the existence of things. I find it very interesting that so many of these sighting stories are so similar. They all describe a very large fish with sharp spikes and elongated heads. There's a very interesting thing to note too, because you would think that if these are different people, maybe not all of them would describe the creature in the same way. I find it interesting that they all do in fact describe it in the same way. All of these sightings also include the creature showing some sort of passive behavior, some aggressive, but there is yet another story, and this one has always stuck out to me as of recently. It was told by a man that was not only attacked by this strange creature, but he was also nearly eaten. The man, we'll call James, another unnamed sailor. 
This was a man who was attacked by a sea monster while on a ship off the coast of South Africa. The creature had suddenly emerged from the water, jumping onto the small fishing ship. It attacked James and proceeded to actually eat several of the other crew members. The creature ended up destroying the small fishing boat, sinking it, causing James to be stranded by sea. The interesting part here about this particular story is that James did survive the encounter, but only to tell the tale. He was missing for three days until he was found in the ocean, floating on a plank of wood. He had been severely injured, bleeding, miraculously not attacked by sharks, and was clinging on to life. When he was found, he was rescued and rushed to a nearby hospital and treated for his injuries. He was barely alive and just made it. He had described what had happened, and of course, nobody believed him. When I read this story a few years ago, I was in shock. I was shocked that the man had survived, but I was also shocked that the doctors did not believe him. They actually laughed at him while they were treating him. I find that to be so shocking because if he was a fictional character, they would believe him in a heartbeat. But because this was a real person, they just write him off as being crazy. But... The thing that I find the most interesting is that the ship had sunk. That means that whatever attacked it had to have been some sort of extremely powerful creature. Maybe even a creature that can go above water for long periods of time that inhabits the ocean. But why would a creature like that attack a fishing boat? I don't know. I'm not a marine biologist. I'm just a curious person that has a very deep interest in anything that is unknown. I would be terrified if I was in the ocean and I encountered a creature like this. I would be so shocked and I would probably freeze. And to this day, we still don't know what the creature was or why it attacked the fishing boat. There are just too many things we will never fully understand about the deep blue. The creature did not follow him. The fisherman was rescued by a passing boat and then made his way back to the village where he had lived. He told the whole story to the villagers who, of course, never believed in sea monsters. John, who was on the verge of losing... I'm a nature photographer. At least, that's my hobby. Nothing thrills me more than capturing the beauty of wildlife on camera. Like I said, it's mainly a hobby, but I try and take every professional opportunity I can. For example, entering contests... You could win big money, and that all goes towards upgrading my equipment. Since, if you know anything about photography, well, it's a very expensive hobby. This was the reason I was out in a small boat, off the coast of Maine, hoping to capture some whale pictures. It was just me and this older guy I'd chartered the boat from, who looked to be about 100 years old. He didn't talk much, but that was fine. I kind of enjoy the quiet, honestly, all so I could concentrate better. He looked like some oldie time mariner, and said to call him Captain. He'd been coming out here for decades and knew the best spots. We'd been out for a couple hours already, when I began to notice something odd. I've seen many unusual abnormalities in nature over the years. You don't necessarily need to believe in monsters once you've seen deformed calves or two-headed piglets. There are so many unusual and freakish creatures in the wild without needing to invent things to fit for a horror movie. I had already gotten some great pictures when I noticed a trail in the water. It looked like blood, and I wondered if there might be a shark. When people think of Maine, they conjure up whales and of course lobsters, but there are a lot of sharks. The captain had a gun with him, just in case, but I couldn't see the telltale fin sticking out of the water, and there didn't seem to be the usual mad panic when the other sea life senses a large predator. Then, I caught a flash of an unusual looking tail splash out of the water. It was unusual because it appeared rotten and skeletal, if that makes any sense. 
reminded me of a cartoon fishbone, and the trail of blood was all around it. The captain didn't even seem remotely phased, but then he didn't seem to have any sort of facial expression at all, besides mono. Maybe he'd seen this before. I tried to ask him, but he just grunted. Then, all of a sudden, there was a loud bang against the side of the boat, and I clearly saw more of the tail, which was just a rotten-looking and bony as the tip of it. That had seemed to have gotten the captain's attention, as now, he made a conscious effort to steer the boat in a different direction. I was trying to take as many photos as I could, have you ever seen that Disney movie about the mermaid? Well, whoever drew the main character, thank God they hadn't seen one of these, or it would have never been a family-friendly movie. In the water beside us was the most grotesque creature that I had ever laid my eyes on, from land or sea. It, and I will say it, rather than she or he, was I refused to liken this hideous thing. It leered out of the water, scratching at the side of the boat. In that full moment, I got a good view of just how truly ugly, grotesque, and revolting it was. What had looked like fin rot covered the entire body. A long, thin, bony tail covered in what appeared to be rotting meat, with bits of its skin and what had looked like fin rot, scales flapping as if they would fall off. It honestly reminded me of a rotting fish. The tail ended around the waist and gave way to an equally skeletal body again, covered in what looked like diseased skin. I couldn't really exactly tell what it was. It looked kind of humanoid. Flapping skin, rotting skin I should say, with visible bones, and it had long, long thin arms with overly large hands. They were more like talons, or dagger-like claws. And all of this, if not ready, was topped with a head that appeared to be a very grotesque-looking skull. I mean, it wasn't a human skull. It was part animal, but I can't exactly make out. It had a grotesque-looking snout, and all sorts of nasty little details. I didn't see any eyes in the sockets, they were just two empty black holes, but it did have a huge maw filled with razor sharp looking teeth. Since I'm writing this to you, to share and to warn people of the dangers, I guess you can say what happened next. I was terrified, and as I believe I have every right to be, my grip on my camera lessened and I lost my camera into the water. Down it went. There's a thousand dollars I'm out of. Once I'd managed to get up, I looked over the side, but the creature and of course my camera were now gone. I yelled at the captain that we needed to get back. Without hesitating further, we shot back to shore without saying anything. I was pretty shaken up by the whole thing, and of course really upset and utterly pissed about losing my thousand dollar camera. Getting off the boat, the captain just looked at me and shook his head. You never hang about if you see one of them. Anyway, that's my experience with what I would call a merfolk, but I don't even know if that's exactly what I saw. The captain, as I said, seemed totally unfazed and would not even talk about it. What happened out there on the boat? I have no idea, but part of me believes it was some paranormal supernatural experience, something from hell or the dead came to visit our boat. As for my camera, well, it took a little while, but I finally was able to replace it. I live on the coast in Cornwall in the UK. It is a place of beauty, and something I have never taken for granted. In fact, one of my favorite things to do is to take a long walk along the beach, especially early morning before the crowds begin to arrive. The sounds of the ocean is incredibly peaceful and gives this overwhelming sense of calm. Even if the waves are lashing, it still makes me feel good. In fact, sometimes when the sky is dark 
and the rain is hammering down, and the waves are angry. And those are my favorite times. And it was during one of these storms that I saw something very unusual in the water. I almost didn't go out. The rain was that heavy, but something drew me to the sea that morning. And because it was so early, I knew I could get home and have a hot shower before heading off to work. So I went. It was early and so wet that I could hardly see. The rain pelting against my skin in a way that it hurts. I remember thinking to myself that I must be mad. Yet I felt strangely compelled to carry on. It was almost like there was this voice in my head. You must continue with this walk. Fighting against the rain and barely being able to see where the weather stopped and the sea began. I saw something moving in the water. Due to the visibility being nearly at zero, it was incredibly hard to determine what it was. But I saw that it was moving, and I knew whatever it was was alive, and large, and ultimately shouldn't be there. I didn't get a really good look at it. It was impossible, and maybe that's what it wanted. All I can make out was a mass of what appeared to be tentacles, dozens and dozens of them, all writhing and bobbing up and down and out of the waves. It would be hard to say what color they were, but they did stand out clearly from the water, a dark, muddy sort of hue. I don't know if it made a noise. There's no way I could have heard anything over the rain and crashing waves. I stood there, mesmerized for several minutes. It reminded me in a way of a pit of snakes. Then, they just seemed to slither back away into the sea. As soon as they had retreated, I almost seemed to snap out of whatever weird days I had been in, and literally ran home to get these sodden clothes warmed up. Even after a shower warm enough to scold my skin, I couldn't get warm. I just shivered the entire day, and the rain kept coming. Then, sometimes after work, the rain just stopped. One second, thrashing down in sheets. The next, nothing. I immediately warmed up after that. So much that I had to start ripping off many layers I'd worn, just to try and get some heat. The whole experience was just really weird. I don't know what I saw in the sea. But even more so, I don't know how it seemed to hold some sort of power over me. It was a very, very weird experience. Very strange. Perhaps the strangest I'd ever experienced. I work as a sea fisherman, catching various produce for a very large supermarket chain, and it isn't uncommon to find something other than fish in my net. I get all sorts of surprises, more and more nowadays. I guess it just shows all the stuff people dump in the sea does not just float to the bottom or rot away. What a shocker, I know. I often bring this extra stuff home and post photos on social media. A sort of look what you've done post. I don't know if it makes any difference but I try to do my bit. I'm not writing this to you to be eco-friendly. I want to tell you, and hopefully your listeners, about the thing that got away. It was one of those regular working days where you're just on autopilot. You've been doing the job for so long. Many of you know what I'm talking about. Those who have jobs and careers that every day is pretty much the same old, same old. Mundane, drawn out. You almost don't even need to concentrate. Your body knows the patterns of what exactly to do. As soon as I was heaving the nets in and out with the day's catch, I almost failed to notice my potential stowaway. Alongside all the garbage that turns up, again, it isn't unusual to get a visitor. I only catch fish. Other guys handle the crustaceans. So, if I pick up a lobster... Crab, squid, 
he goes back into the sea. Sometimes, though, I have catch a weird-looking thing. I truly believe we have no idea what lives in the vast oceans, and there are hundreds, if not thousands of species we'll probably never discover. And just maybe, it was one of those that I caught that day. It would also be fitting to have come from any sci-fi or alien movie. So as I was emptying out the net, I saw something shoot out and scuttle across the boat. My first thought didn't go to alien, sea monster. I thought it must be a crab or lobster. I'd only had a fleeting glance as it shot off, but I did notice it left a sludgy black trail. It might be ink, I thought, or maybe a kind of squid. Whatever it was, it needed to go back into the ocean. I followed the trail over to the very darkest corner of the boat and I could see it had several eyes looking at me. I was genuinely curious at this point. I called to it, hoping it would respond to me. If anybody had seen it, I'm not sure if it would have looked like a scene from a horror movie. This thing leapt out, tried to attach itself to me, and I managed to grapple it just in time. The best way to describe it is it looked somewhat like a giant scorpion-esque lobster-type crab with too many eyes and nasty vicious pinchers and a really long stinging tail. It opened its mouth like a sandworm and its head almost disappeared as the mouth was so wide and it screamed and I threw it back into the sea. That description doesn't do it justice, but it's the best I can do. It also left some of that black sludge all down me, and I spent the next few days violently throwing up. I honestly think that it had some kind of low dosage poison in its system. I don't know what it was, but if I get another in my net, I'm quitting. Before I get into this, let me go ahead and give you some important backstory. A good friend of mine and I were on the western coast of Florida, hanging out. Specifically the Gulf Coast. We were having a great time. We had found this great secluded spot, right there along the shoreline, where nobody else was. And were drinking, enjoying the sun. After all, it was a very warm day in April. So, we're just sitting there, lost in whatever conversation we were having when my friend looks over at the water because he hears something. He then turns his attention towards the water. I follow after, and we both see it. Suddenly, I saw the water churn and I heard a deep, guttural noise. I see this huge green creature with spines all over it shooting up out of the water. It had a long tail and a big head with a very wide mouth. This thing jets up out of the water, running right for us, like a man in a swamp monster costume. It was crazy. This thing was something you can't even imagine. It honestly kind of reminded me of the thing of the Black Lagoon, but much uglier. We don't even waste a second. My friend and I just turn around towards the Everglades and start running as hard as we can to outrun this thing. It catches up to us pretty quickly, just due to its immense speed. It was able to not only emerge from the water as quickly as it did, but it was running after us fast. I remember thinking to myself, what is that thing? And I'm running as fast as I can, and my friend is now right behind me. We're running through the thickest parts of the Everglades as fast as we can, hoping this thing cannot catch up to us. It's a pretty long area we were running through, and we were beginning to get tired. I could hear it breathing. Its breaths were loud and deep, and I knew we were not going to be able to outrun this thing forever. I could not force my legs to move faster than they were already going, and I knew that this thing was now following us into the Everglades. I turned around to see what this thing looked like, fully up close, and it was honestly... The most terrifying sight. 
this horrible looking creature in much more vivid and unpleasant detail. Let me just start off and say nothing about this thing looked nice. It was disgusting. Like a cross between toxic waste ooze, a murloc looking thing, and some sort of amphibious frog mutation. This thing was about ten feet tall from what I could tell. It was huge. It had a long tail with black spines shooting at its back, and it had a large, wide-open mouth, lots of tiny, sharp teeth, tiny little teeth. It had weird little eyes on the top of its head, too, and it had two arms that were about three feet long each, very long, and it had these massive, strange, pincer-type hands. They were only a few fingers, I guess you could call it that, more like appendages. This thing was covered in slimy skin, or maybe scales. I couldn't really tell. It was moving in on us, and fast, and I could see that it was getting ready to attack. I didn't know what to do. I looked back at my friend as we are running, and he was just as frightened as I was. I hear this thing make a loud hissing sound, kind of like an insect does. And so here we are, stuck in the middle of the Everglades with this thing. It appeared as if it was going to attack. I just remember my friend and I looking at each other. And so we began throwing rocks at this thing, hoping we could at least stun it or knock it down. I threw one of the biggest rocks I could find at it, and it made a loud thud when it hit the creature right in the head. It didn't appear phased at all. In fact, it only started running directly at us more. We knew we were not going to be able to outrun this thing forever, so we just kept running into the Everglades. I remember being so tired, but I had to keep going. It was hot, and I was sweating. I was breathing so heavily, and I was just exhausted. Finally, we come upon a big tree that was just kind of standing out from the rest, it was right in the middle of a very small clearing. I could see that this tree was covered in a similar slimy substance that was on this creature. My friend and I, thinking quickly, veered off the path, literally diving and flying into a very small section of brush for cover. I could hear the creature running right toward us. It stopped by the tree and was looking around for us. Because we kind of cut a corner, it did not see that we both dove into this small brush, and it could not find us. It was kind of letting off a low growl, kind of like cats do. I was looking up at it through the brush, and I could just see how ugly this thing was. You know, it was really frightening, and it kept looking for us, making these little clicking noises. It was angry that it could not find us. So my friend and I stayed quiet stayed in our little section of brush, waiting for it to leave. After what seemed like an hour of waiting, we heard the creature's footsteps move away from us and start looking in different areas. It probably wasn't even an hour, but it sure felt like it. We sat and waited a bit longer to make sure we could not hear it anymore. Finally, we decided to get out of there. We just walked out to that section of brush and started walking in a different direction entirely. We had no idea where we were, and I remember being so scared. It was like the thing was going to start chasing us the moment it knew we were out in the open. I remember this being one of the scariest things that has ever happened to me. I wish I could have got a picture of it with my phone, but I didn't want to take a chance, so... I just kept running out there, in a different direction. As we're going in this different direction, we began to hear those weird clicking noises, the same ones that this was making, except all around us, as if there were more than one of them. I'm not sure if that explains why there was that strange substance of slime on that tree or what. After that, we decided to just call one of our other friends and have him pick us up. We didn't want to be in the Everglades alone with this thing, or possibly more of them out there. We were both so drained from running, and we just wanted to get back to our car. After maybe an hour or so of walking out of the way, we eventually make it. 
our friends were there waiting for us by the car, just to ensure that we were safe. We explained to them that somebody tried to chase us and hurt us. Of course, that wasn't truthful, but we knew they wouldn't have believed us had we told them this strange thing from the sea came out of the water and chased us on shore into the Everglades. My friend and I and our other friends went back to his house. That's all I kind of remember of that day. But I will never forget the thing I saw that day. I'm not sure if it was an alien or what, but I do know that when I got home, I looked it up and found out that there have been sightings of this creature in the Everglades, but reports are far and few in between. Some call him Crawfish Man. I have never seen anything like it, and I really don't know what it is. I have never been so scared in my life. This thing that was chasing us, it was like it was angry that we were in its territory or home. That's how I kind of internalized it. Either way, just be careful when you're at the beach that you don't piss off the wrong thing and end up in a horror science fiction movie like we did. Just to preface, I'm certain that me and my family witnessed a real-life, living, breathing plesiosaurus. However, I can't be 100% sure. I'll tell you my story and you can be the judge. Back in 2009, I was spoiled with my family vacation to Maui, where we got to go on a small private boat tour where we got to go whale watching. I don't know too much about sea life, but I can tell you, we did see whales that day. But I'm pretty sure we also saw something else that day that not only shocked all of us, but even the tour guide who has done a multitude of tours. This was going on in the early evening hours. There was still daylight, so we could see. But the thing that we saw in the evening time was definitely not a whale. It was something else entirely. So my family and I were looking out into the water when we see a large tail fin of a whale. We all got excited at the sight of it when the tour guide pointed in the water a little ways away and asked us, did you guys see that? What is that? We all look and gasped at what we saw. As soon as that tail fin went underwater, we see another large shape moving in the water, closer to the boat. It looked like a flipping bulbous thing moving around. It was huge. It was easily the size of a small car, but you couldn't really see much details of it from the distance and how much it was above the water. This thing was much closer than the whale and was probably no more than 70 feet at most. Then, we see it lift its head up above the water, and for the first time, we could see much more details. Whatever animal this was had a very long neck and a small head, and as soon as it surfaced, it looked over in our direction and let out this long, drawn-out groan. At first, we all thought it was maybe a large sea serpent or something, but then the tour guide got excited and started telling us that it was indeed a baby humpback whale, and seeing as it was really close to shore, we were able to see its fins and tail. He says that it was a young calf that was coming to shore to feed, Look, the dude's an idiot. I'm sorry, but since when does a baby humpback whale look like a flipping dinosaur? Maybe he was just saying that to try and comfort other people of the boat. Like maybe they didn't know. I know it was a long shot, but I was hoping someone in here, in this community, might know something about this. Personally, I wasn't scared. I thought it was like the coolest thing I ever saw, but... My family and the tour guide seemed nervous. I know that I'm not the first person to witness this, and I'm sure I'm not the last. There have been many other plesiosaur sightings, and again, like I said, I can't be totally sure. I don't know what this was exactly. After it looked over at us, it quickly retracted its head back down into the water, along with its long neck, and then its large, bulbous body disappeared underneath the surface. And that, my friends, was it. 
I'm really curious to know what this was. I mean, it really looked like a plesiosaur, but I can't be sure. Anyone here have any experience with this or heard about anything like this? I hope it doesn't seem like I'm trolling. I really do have a genuine interest in this. I just wanted to share my experience with the community. Thanks for reading. I was deep out at sea on an Alaskan commercial fishing trip. I had been going out for years at that point, and it was, in some ways, the last frontier for me. It was the one place that I could still find complete solitude. The one place that I could just go be by myself. I didn't have to explain myself to anybody. I could just be by myself, and I was so far removed from the rest of the world, I felt like I was on my own planet. In a strange way, it was freeing, and I was able to do some of my best thinking out there. The further I got from the rest of the world, the less I felt like I was truly a part of it. But, on this particular trip, things were different. Something was just off, and it was making me feel like I was on edge all the time. The other guys on the boat were fine, but I didn't know them very well. They were all nice, but they all seemed to be a little strange at times. I can never put my finger on exactly what it was. I felt like I was in danger sometimes. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with what we all saw on this trip, but it does make you wonder. This was not my first real fishing trip, and I had been out at sea more times than not. I could have imagined what we had saw that day was this disturbing. It all started with an unusually large catch. We had caught a lot of fish, and the trip was shaping up to be a very good one. We had a good amount of fish on board already, and we were pretty excited about the haul. The sky was clear, and the weather was fantastic. The fish were biting, and we were all getting along. We were going to be making some good money. It looked like everything was going to be just fine. So, we're there pushing through the water, about an hour away from harbor, when something of a very large size begins to swim by the boat. One of the men on board starts screaming and pointing. We all go rushing towards the port side, and all of our jaws dropped simultaneously. You could just see this incredibly large mass swimming just below the surface. It was very long and very wide. Its head was just barely coming out of the water, and it was swimming at a very high speed. We could see its flippers even moving very quickly underneath, at least the shape of them. And they were much larger than the flippers of a whale. I can't over-exaggerate how large this thing was. I mean, it had to be easily over 100 feet in length. Easily. We all just kept looking at each other, looking back at this thing in complete disbelief. We had never seen anything like this in our lives, let alone our fishing careers. We were just in complete shock. The boat, though, was still moving, and we did not want to lose sight of it. We were all scrambling to get our cameras, and get them ready to take pictures, or whatever. Then, this thing sticks its entire head out of the water, and this is when the story gets a little understandably crazy. What we saw, I can't explain in words what this thing was. It was maybe a deep blue color, more dark gray than blue though, I believe, and stared at all of us for maybe five seconds before submerging and diving down into the water and vanishing. A couple of other details that really stuck out to me was that it was covered with some sort of strange-looking scales that I had never seen before. There were dark blotches all over its body and head. Some of them were large. I mean, we were all in shock seeing this. But we knew what we had saw, and it was really hard for us to accept that we actually all saw something like this. None of us had our camera out like we should have because it was just shocking to see something so magnificent. It is certainly the largest sea serpent I have ever witnessed in my life. We were all just in awe, 
None of us could believe it. I'm telling you, if sea monsters do exist, I had just seen one. If Leviathan does exist, that was it. It was easily the most incredible thing that I have ever seen in my life. I was so overwhelmed that I could not even think. I was dumbfounded. It was an experience that I will never forget for the rest of my life. And you know, I've heard many tales too growing up, being a rookie fisherman, about things like that fishermen had seen out in the waters. You hear it all from ghosts to ghost ships, even UFOs. I had just never imagined that I would bear witness to a colossal-sized sea animal. I was shocked, and I didn't want to tell anybody about it until I could at least fully process everything. When you're in shock, I mean, I was witnessing the biggest thing I'd ever seen in my life. I couldn't even think about what to say. So when we got back to the shore, none of us really said anything about it to anybody. I mean, what do you say? What do you say to somebody when you tell them that you saw a 100 plus foot sea serpent swimming around in the ocean? They would probably think you're crazy. So we just kept it to ourselves and we all went on with our lives. I don't know if I'll ever forget what that creature was, but I will say that it was an incredible experience to behold. I have never seen anything like it before. I can understand why it's so hard to comprehend that something like this actually exists, but it does. I hope you have a wonderful day, and thanks for hearing an old man like me tell his sea tale. I'm not sure if I will ever see something like that again in my life. If I do, I'll let you know. Let me tell you about something that happened to me just a few years ago when I was walking along the pier in North Carolina, just along the coast in a small fishing town. I won't name the town, but if you look on a map, it shouldn't be too hard to guess. I'm a huge fan of night fishing, and so these events would occur during the night. Now, I can't say for certain what I encountered was an octopus, but actually something else entirely. It's left me frightened and apprehensive about fishing again at night. Yes, it scared me that badly. Anyway, here it goes. I walked along the pier and looked out at the ocean at night. The sky was an inky black with just a few stars peeking through. A beautiful night sky and scenery. As I'm getting ready to cast my line into the water below, the only real light source being from the moon illuminating the waters, I could just so faintly see the silhouette of what appeared to be a large octopus rising out of the water. At least, I thought it was an octopus at first, but I stand by that it was not. I pulled out my fishing rod, at least pulled it away, and the water became still. I couldn't see the creature anymore. I turned around to see where this thing went, and I see these tentacles slowly sliding up the pier with a large fish in its grasp. Now I back up, and these tentacles slide back down. Then, what appeared to be a tentacle-like appendage shoots out of the water, grabs onto my leg, and pulls me down into the black water, and grabs a hold of my chest. And then, what I thought at the time, wrapped its tentacles around me and began to constrict. I felt my ribcage starting to crack, and this thing was now only tightening its grip. I mustered my last bit of strength and pulled a knife out from my pocket, stabbing this thing in what I thought was the eye. The way that had its tentacles positioned around my body, I was fortunate that I had the free room to grab a knife and stab this thing as hard as I could. It immediately released me, and I was able to successfully swim to the surface as fast as I could. I could see that I was no more than 10 feet below the water's surface, so I'm going as fast as I can to swim back towards shore, no more than 30 feet, and I could feel this tentacle thing trying to grab onto my heel to pull me back under. With enough kicking and resisting, I'm able to break free and make it back. Screaming for help wasn't going to get me anywhere. 
there's no one around. I was out here all alone. I did my best to make it back up to the shoreline, and I could see these things in the water squirming behind me, and saw that it did not quite look like an octopus, at least not like one I had ever seen. Then, I realized that it never had itself wrapped around me like I thought, but only one large tentacle, and what I thought I was stabbing, it was actually just that one tentacle. This was pretty scary. I told this story to a friend of mine who is a lighthouse keeper, and he's pretty much a salty sea dog. He said that creatures like this are usually docile, and that they usually don't attack you unless you threaten them. I explained it to him, though, and he said it's not like an octopus to behave like that, but even he's still unsure. He also said that I must have done something to provoke it. He said that they normally don't attack unless you get too close to them. I'm not really sure what to make of the whole thing myself, if we're honest. It's just one strange occurrence. I'll try and make this as detailed as possible, but also not go overboard. So, I go back to the early 80s when I was 12 years old. I grew up in a small town in the Midwest, and I remember one time, my family and I were fishing on a small river. It was myself, my father, my mother, and my two sisters. When the sun began to set, we then decided to leave and go back to our car. Walking along the shore, we made our way back, and as we're walking back on the shore, my father notices, and he says, What's that thing? We all looked up, and we saw it. This large, amphibian-like creature. This thing looked to be about 12 feet long, and it was huge. We all ran for our lives back to the car, with my sisters and mother screaming. It kind of resembled a frog and a fish. I don't even know how to begin to describe it, but it climbed up and out of the river, and even tried to come after us. It was scary, to say the least. I remember that it had these strange webbed hands, too. It was a very strange-looking animal. We made it back to the car just in time, as this thing appeared to be staggering around the shoreline of the river. It was very frightening. Look, I've never really told anyone about this besides my wife. I don't know if it was a mutant or what, but it's something I'll never forget. And for a long time afterwards, it really deterred my interest in fishing. I used to practice diving and swimming in the open ocean a lot when I was much younger, in my 20s. Not so much anymore. To conquer my fear of being out in the open water and to help develop buoyancy, balance, and swimming endurance, I was training to go deep diving for my career, so it was well worth the training. I would go out with a team of five other guys, and we would just practice in the open ocean. One time, I was swimming in the ocean, practicing diving, actually, when, out of the corner of my eye, I see this dark humanoid shape that almost kind of jumps up on me and sinks these sharp little teeth into my back. Oh, man, it hurt. I'm underwater, so I try not to scream in panic, but this thing or person has a hold of me. I only faintly saw the shape of it as it swam towards me while in the water. Suddenly, it started pulling me down deeper, and I came up to the surface and noticed that what was holding me down was this human-like thing with a torso and arms. But instead of legs, it appeared to have like a fish-like tail, kind of like a mermaid, but it did not look like a fantasy mermaid. I just had a small glimpse of it because it swam so fast and grabbed at me, but thankfully, I was able to get away. It turns out, one of our team guys, Jonathan, was able to help me and save me. He was just swimming nearby and saw me being dragged down by this thing and attacked me, and so he attacked it. He pulled me up to the surface and helped me get away. When we're all diving in the ocean, we're generally no far apart than maybe what, 30 to 50 yards, so that's why he was able to see. 
I had a panic attack and had to be pulled back to the boat by Jonathan. He's also a lifeguard, and he saved my life from drowning had this thing held on to me any longer than it had. I was so grateful to him that I offered him a drink at the bar for saving my life. Listen, I know it's probably not much, and I know it's probably not much of a story, but I was nearly drowned and killed by some mermaid creature. I had to have my back bandaged up too because the bite was bad. It looked like a large fish bit into me because it released blood into the water, which we would find out as I'm getting bandaged up on boat. Since I was bleeding so badly, everybody had to get back up onto the boat to keep from attracting sharks. This story is true and I swear to my life, I will never forget that day I was in the water. I'm not going to reveal my name because I like to travel and I don't want to be found. I don't want to be known to the world. Jonathan had supposedly had other encounters with the same mermaid type creatures before. He said that he's seen a group of them, these same creatures, mermaids I guess, that live in the open waters right around Mexico in the Gulf. They sometimes come to shore and go into the water and they like to attack humans. He said he knows that I was lucky to be alive. Their bites are deadly, poisonous. Although, I don't recall ever being poisoned, though. His encounter with these things was a little different. He was swimming in the ocean when he was suddenly attacked. These things bit into his leg and even tore it open. He had to get stitches and claimed it was very, very painful. After my encounter, I believe that mermaids do exist. Maybe not in the traditional sense where Disney and fantasy make them out to be these cutesy things, but they are some type of humanoid fish creature that do attack. I can't deny that. I have scars on my back to prove it. In addition, there have been reports of Bigfoot sightings in a nearby area on land. Even on the TV show, Destination Truth, Josh Gates and the team investigated a Bigfoot sighting in a swamp. The witness also claimed that a small creature attacked her while she was snorkeling. Any connections there? So, I guess it would not be the first time that people are hearing about these strange creatures in the water, eh? Listen, I'm going to share with you a major traumatic event that happened in my life, where I was convinced I died, but somehow I did not. I was near the brink of death, with how badly I was clawed up and torn. Why my life was spared, I'll never know. One day, when I was just a teenager, I was paddling out in the ocean in Southern California, not too far off from the shore. I was paddling out to the waves on my surfboard when I saw something big swimming in the water. I thought it was maybe a sea lion, but as I got closer, I feared it was a shark. But then I realized it was strange looking and nowhere near either a shark or a sea lion. In fear, I tried to swim away, but it got close to me and it reached out with this strange hand and grabbed hold of me and it had claws. So now I'm holding onto my board, screaming in terror and this thing opened its mouth to try and bite me and I could see shark-like razor teeth. I closed my eyes and tried to escape the grasp of this thing, but it had me tightly and was pulling me down in the water. I could see my own reflection in its black, soulless eyes. I accepted I was dead. After accepting that, I let go. I felt myself fall off the board and this thing pulled me under, and for some reason, I lost complete consciousness. I was convinced I was dead. Then. The next thing I know, I come to, and a lifeguard is giving me CPR on the beach, with tons of people standing around. I had deep, bloody gash marks all up and down my body, with this strange purple ooze coming out of them. My mother was scared, crapless, and crying. I mean, I was a bloody mess. I was taken immediately to the hospital, and they had to sew up all my wounds. It took them days to clean me up. I was told that the police had found my surfboard in the water, 
and I guess it had a huge bite mark in it. The police claimed that it could have been a shark, but they weren't sure, but that a shark was most likely. They also said that two other kids were attacked by a similar creature in the same area. The kids were also, like me, lucky to survive. I was in the hospital for a few more days after that, followed by many surgeries to kind of help stitch me back together. There were some torn ligaments in me. I never did go back into the water for quite a while after. It was bad enough that, like I said, I had to get surgery. I was scared that I was going to die. The whole thing left me traumatized. I had nightmares about it for weeks afterwards. I never told anybody about what really happened to me in the water. I was always too afraid to talk about it. I never had anybody to tell. So I told my mother that I was attacked by a shark, but I never told her the truth about what had happened. I tried to put the whole thing out of my mind, but it was hard. I would have nightmares. I did not even want to look at the ocean. I had a hard time dealing with what happened. So I started to see a therapist to help me deal with what had happened, and it took a long time for me to get over it. Eventually, I would start surfing again, but I did not go back to the beach where it happened. I had a hard time dealing with that trauma. I think it really affected me mentally. I tried to go back to school and get on with my life, but even then, I was having a rough time concentrating. I would have day nightmares about it, waking up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat. I didn't know how to deal with that pain of the attack. I grew up a bit more, went off to college and got my degree in business. I have a great job now in life, but I still live with those memories of the attack, of that demon thing that attacked me in the water. It's hard to forget what happened, but I know I eventually will. You know, you're probably the first actual person I've ever sat down and opened up to about this traumatic event in full truth. I'm thankful for that. I'm going to get over it. I'm going to get back to the ocean. I'm just going to have to deal with it. I know I can. I'm going to fight through the pain and make myself deal with it. Thank you. I have an interesting sea tale for you that I'm sure you'll probably find interesting, if anything at least. This occurred back in Spain in the early 1900s with a very poor fisherman. This man, whom we'll call John, was fishing in the ocean when he was attacked by a large sea creature. It had come out of the water and leapt onto the boat to eat him, but the fisherman and his catch who he had been fishing for hours, was in a state of exhaustion, and he somehow managed to escape. The creature did not follow him, and he was actually rescued by a passing boat and made his way back to the village where he had lived. He told the whole story to the villagers who had never believed in sea monsters, and they laughed at him. John, who was on the verge of losing his livelihood, was ridiculed for his story. But... When the story made its way to the village leader, he ordered a search for the creature and even offered a reward. When the search party returned, they reported that they had found the creature. But when the leader's best hunter approached the creature, the creature attacked. The hunter was killed and the rest of the party was forced to retreat. This creature was never found again after that and John was released. I find this story very interesting to note because of the details about it, and how John goes in to describe the detail. He described it as being a large fish creature, and also having very large thins and sharp spines. He said the very sight of it alone was terrifying and primordial. It scared him. And this is one of the reasons I believe it is real, because the story is very detailed, and John, who I'm just using as a name because... The fisherman in the story was actually never given a name. He is speaking from experience. John had seen this strange, mysterious creature. This was right off the coast of Portugal, where he was fishing. There's actually another written record I've seen maybe about 30 years before this, around 1860 to 1870, 
where yet another fisherman describes an almost similar sighting of a creature that he too saw while fishing. While similar in description, this fisherman saw a creature that he described as being very elongated in the head and looked like some sort of strange ancient crocodile, but much, much larger. He described it as being so large that it nearly capsized his small fishing boat, and it swam underneath it. It swam close enough to the surface, though, that he got a good enough view of it, and although it never surfaced, he saw more of it than what he would have liked to. These kinds of things really make you question and wonder, what's really out there in the ocean that we don't know about? It seems like every day, more and more, we're hearing about things like cryptids and strange beings being caught on camera. The sea is already so vast and mysterious as it is, we aren't even aware of half the creatures living in it. And yet, as a collective species, we are so quick to dismiss anything we deem as outlandish, like the megalodon is in fact extinct, or that mermaids don't exist. The sightings that I continue to read, that are well documented from back years and years ago, really make me question just where we are at in our modern day scientific approach to proving the existence of things. I find it very interesting that so many of these sighting stories are so similar. They all describe a very large fish with sharp spikes and elongated heads. There's a very interesting thing to note too, because you would think that if these are different people, maybe not all of them would describe the creature in the same way. I find it interesting that they all do in fact describe it in the same way. All of these sightings also include the creature showing some sort of passive behavior, some aggressive. But there is yet another story, and this one has always stuck out to me as of recently. It was told by a man that was not only attacked by the strange creature, but he was also nearly eaten. The man we'll call James, another unnamed sailor. This was a man who was attacked by a sea monster while on a ship off the coast of South Africa. The creature had suddenly emerged from the water, jumping onto the small fishing ship. It attacked James and proceeded to actually eat several of the other crew members. The creature ended up destroying the small fishing boat, sinking it, causing James to be stranded by sea. The interesting part here about this particular story is that James did survive the encounter, but only to tell the tale. He was missing for three days until he was found in the ocean, floating on a plank of wood. He had been severely injured, bleeding, miraculously not attacked by sharks, and was clinging on to life. When he was found, he was rescued and rushed to a nearby hospital and treated for his injuries. He was barely alive and just made it. He had described what had happened, and of course, nobody believed him. When I read this story a few years ago, I was in shock. I was shocked that the man had survived, but I was also shocked that the doctors did not believe him. They actually laughed at him while they were treating him. I find that to be so shocking because if he was a fictional character, they would believe him in a heartbeat. But because this was a real person, they just write him off as being crazy. But the thing that I find the most interesting is that the ship had sunk. That means that whatever attacked it had to have been some sort of extremely powerful creature. Maybe even a creature that can go above water for long periods of time that inhabits the ocean. But why would a creature like that attack a fishing boat? I don't know. I'm not a marine biologist. I'm just a curious person that has a very deep interest in anything that is unknown. I would be terrified if I was in the ocean and I encountered a creature like this. I would be so shocked and I would probably freeze. And to this day, we still don't know what the creature was or why it attacked the fishing boat. There are just too many things we will never fully understand about the deep blue. The creature did not follow him. The fisherman was rescued by a passing boat and then made his way back to the village where he had lived. He told the whole story to the villagers, who of course never believed in sea monsters. John, who was on the verge of losing...
I was doing some scuba diving with some friends off the southern coast of Maui. The waters are beautiful, just as much as the fish life. But somewhere along the journey, I got spooked when I saw this strange dangly looking creature swimming out of a small alcove underneath the water. It looked like a cross between an octopus and a squid, and it had these weird arms that were long enough to wrap around its body and then extend all the way down its tail end. It radiated purple to red and had these long tendrils that drug behind it. No, not like tentacles, but almost like stingers, kind of like a jellyfish. That's what they looked like. This creature was very large, longer than me, and I'm six foot. The thing swam towards us, and all of us watched in awe as it slowly approached. Then, it seemed to lunge forward at us. My friend quickly started swimming out the other way, and we all began swimming back towards the boat. We have never seen this animal before, so we weren't sure what to expect. It pursued us in the water, the whole 80 feet back to our anchored boat. I knew we were only a mile or so offshore, but I swear it swam faster and faster, closing in on us. We were able to get back on the boat and sped off. It never reappeared. We never saw the creature again after that, but we did come back in that exact spot for two more days after for more scuba diving before continuing on our journey to another section of ocean. Whatever that thing was, it was certainly a new creature we had seen. Make no mistake, during our second and third days there, at the part of the coast, we never saw this creature again. I have no idea what it was, and the thing just looked very bizarre. I'm convinced it had followed us back to the boat the first time, and then hid. It was no animal we knew of. I almost wonder if that thing was just trying to chase us off, or maybe it was actually trying to kill us. I have never been back to that part of the underwater reef, which was south of our boat that day. My mind still races with possibilities of what it could have been, and what it was doing there. The next two days we were scuba diving there, we actually spent more of our time exploring the northern, western, and eastern regions, even seeing sea turtles. No sharks, thankfully. Because of what we do, we happen to know some experts in our social circles. When asked about what we had seen, they weren't quite sure what we were talking about. These are experienced guys who study marine life. They know just about every fish, every whale, everything. We all saw the same thing, and to the best of their understanding, what we saw isn't a normal animal that lives in this area. My best guess is that it could have been a large creature that was passing through, but ultimately, I don't know. I've never seen a creature like that before. It looked so very alien-like, as much as the life does in the sea. After some thinking, the four of us agreed that it was most likely a large cephalopod of some kind. This was quite possibly a large and very aggressive one, but still not something you would ever want to encounter again. We had gotten lucky. I still remember looking into the alcove and seeing that thing come out of its hole, with its tentacles all around it. All in all, it was an interesting experience, but I'll say this. If that creature's tentacles would have grabbed at us, we would have needed a lot more luck than what we actually had. Years ago, during tuna fishing season, far off about 65 miles in the ocean from Massachusetts, we all had a nearly terrifying experience out there. This was later on in the season, around October, but something very large nearly capsized our fishing boat, something much larger than any whale. I don't know what it was exactly that scared us so much, but it slightly surfaced multiple times afterwards. It appeared to have a very elongated body that we made out to be a large sea serpent-esque animal, maybe an eel. The thing came from underneath the boat, and to my best guess, it accidentally hit our boat while ascending to the surface, which was so powerful, nearly capsized us. The ocean is an unknown place after all. We were all pretty shaken up by this event, but luckily none of us got seriously hurt, and there's no telling the true size of any animals that live down there in the deep. When you're roughly 65 miles offshore, anything is possible 
in terms of sea life. You'll run into all sorts of things you never thought possible. So when I say part of this unknown creature surfaced, it was really only parts of its body, which we all made out to be kind of like a long eel body. I'm not lying when I say that this thing was larger and longer than a whale. Once it hit our boat and nearly knocked us over, it continued nonchalantly swimming east, unfazed by the impact. When you have a sea creature that large, I have no idea how it accidentally hit our boat. Maybe it wasn't accidental. That's just myself trying to convince me it wasn't a nefarious event. I think with how big that thing was, if it wanted to capsize us and devour us whole, it could have in traditional sea monster fashion. Unsurprisingly, for me, maybe not for you. Since I work around hardened and experienced fishermen for many years, they all have their own terrifying sea monster type stories that they've shared with me over the years. This was just my real first experience with a larger than life sea creature. I think it actually set the tone for my life to this day, and everything I've done in some way has been trying to keep a grasp on reality and sanity against all odds. I've had other close calls and stories, but those I'll keep for another time and place. I think the important part is what happened in the ocean and how it's relatable to discovering new species of creatures in the ocean. There is so much unknown life that exists that we have no idea about. Since we're the ones spending so much time out in this terrain, we get the joy of running into these things. It's a risk all of us face every single day out there, and it's an exciting and terrifying experience at the same time. Every new discovery starts off as a mystery. When we bring these new life forms back to the surface of enlightenment and learn more about them, it's a whole new adventure all over again. Like I said, this long eel-like creature was much longer than a whale, maybe double or triple in length. And you would think with all of us on board, nearly being capsized, that we would be phased by the event. Surprisingly, none of us long term were, because so many of the men that I fished with were so hardened from their own sea adventures. Well, this was just another day on the job. Business as usual. Since it was my first real quote unquote sea monster experience, I was convinced it was Leviathan himself, but maybe not. I can safely walk away from this event though and tell you it was the largest sea creature that I've ever known or seen in my entire life. I mean this thing had to have been over 70 feet in length and probably double the width of a whale. I'm not kidding either. You need to understand that for something to nearly capsize a fishing boat, it's a pretty big deal. One of my close friends who I fished along with, he's an older guy, but during his tenure as a fisherman, he's seen some really large alligator like animals out in the ocean. He calls them aquadiles or aquatic crocodiles. He goes on to tell me that they are the largest unspoken sea predators he has ever seen. His theory is that there is a subspecies of aquatic crocodiles nearly 60 to 70 feet in length that just never died out from extinction and are still around from the dinosaur days. This would explain his own sightings that he's had around Australia and other areas of the world. I guess seeing these large type of aquatic crocodilians are very common around the New Zealand Australian area. Why? I'm not exactly sure, but I've never myself gone tuna fishing around there, or really any fishing for that matter. But either way, if that's what I have to deal with seeing, you can count me out. Back in 2011, I got the chance as a university student to attend a small deep sea expedition in the Gulf Coast of Mexico during May of the same year. The trip was more or less about testing out the current boundaries of deep sea expeditions and the current technology available to us at the time than it really was anything else. Because of my performance in school and interest in marine biology at the time, and because I knew the right people, I got to be selected to take part. I had no idea what to expect, but I figured I would just go along with the group for the sake of going on an adventure. The trip itself went well enough. We were able to explore the deepest parts of the ocean floor without any problems. However, there was one encounter that I will never forget. It happened when we were exploring a large underwater basin known as the Sigsby Deep. It's a small portion in the central part of the Gulf Coast that is around 14,000 feet deep. Man has explored much deeper, but again, 
This point of an expedition was to test how newer technology could sustain significant water pressure. The entire expedition was made up of three boats, each equipped with different equipment and various scientific instruments. We had several marine biologists aboard, as well as a few other crew members with technical skills such as various technicians. When exploring the region, you're not allowed to take anything with you that could be possibly left behind, be it supplies or equipment. This is for two reasons. The first being that if something were to happen to your boat and you had supplies aboard, you would have no way to provide for your crew. The second being that everything you bring with you must be able to withstand that high of pressure. That's not to say that we didn't find anything of value. While exploring and descending, we did find a large number of species that had not yet been seen before by any other expeditions in the area. We also managed to collect several new species of jellyfish, new types of crab, and an abundance of other marine life. That was a joy. Once we really started descending into the basin is when we got the radio call from one of the ships above saying we needed to ascend back up to the surface immediately. Something very large was ascending from the bottom of the basin, a bio life form, and was on the course to collide with us at a nearly 90 degree angle. We all scrambled to get ready and prepared our gear while we waited for the signal that would tell us what to do next. At this point, I don't think anyone had ever encountered anything like this before. There was no warnings given to us or any indications that we should prepare ourselves for this type of event. All we knew was that this thing was coming towards us fast and we needed to get out of the area as soon as possible. We were able to successfully ascend back up our ship to the surface without any issues, thank God. We were then shown what our machinery picked up and what exactly they had seen. Judging from the data, roughly 2,000 feet below our ship, at the time, something of incredible size and mass was ascending quickly upwards from the bottom of the basin, which again, for those of you that are listening, is 14,000 feet deep. So large that the force of whatever it was coming up to the water could have had a devastating impact on our tiny submarine. We were able to quickly move off course and then ascend from there without any problems, but had we continued to stay on our course and continue descending, we would have smacked right into, well, whatever it was. The only thing we can make out was that it was indeed some sort of bio life form that we lost track of once it ascended to a certain point, because it turned as it reached out of the basin, but continued to stay along the bottom floor of the Gulf Coast. At the time, our surface home-based boat was using proprietary patent-pending technology, along with sonar technology, if you're curious as to how we were able to see what this was and how it was approaching. During this time, we could get a glimpse, a small glimpse, to that of larger-than-life life forms living down in certain depths into the basin. This life form just happened to be ascending from the bottom and came into range of reading. The machine estimates are very rough, because it was still being worked on at the time, but I heard potentially this life form was anywhere around 37.2 meters to 48 meters in length, judging by what they had captured on their equipment. That means whatever this was, was literally enormous. That's a colossal sized underwater animal, but for something to live in such depths like the basin would have to be of incredible size to withstand such water pressure anyway. Now that we're in 2020, Technology has been perfected and more advanced than it was nine years ago. I'm sorry my story isn't that exciting, but it left all of us freaked out and excited at the same time. The basin extends pretty deep, so something was making its home all the way down in there. What was it exactly? Well, even we can't be too sure. A few years ago, we spent a few days at a friend's lakeside house that she had rented out. We just wanted to get away from the hustle and bustle of the city and go somewhere to unwind and somewhere we could take our dog. The house we got was perfect, just as I had expected from having seen the photos. At the time, it was early spring, but still warm enough to be able to sit on the couch or on the porch in the mornings on the loveseat a blanket over my legs, 
coffee in hand, whilst my husband took the dog for a long walk. It was one of those beautiful mornings, only just light, but I'd been dying to sit out there and finish the end of my book when I saw something in the lake. Now, let me just back up a moment. I didn't see it at first. I smelt it. And my God, did it smell. It was like rotting death in an open sewer. An utmost terrible stench. I know that water comes with its own natural odor, especially being a pond or a lake. And not the salty sea. There was an occasional smell when the wind caught the wrong way. But nothing like this. It was dreadful, as if the dog had left a pile of presents for us after eating something he shouldn't have. Putting my hand over my nose and breathing through my mouth, I looked out into the water to try and see what on earth could be causing it, and hoping that something nasty hadn't washed up on shore. I might sound selfish, but I don't want my little vacation to end with wildlife services coming down to remove a dead something, or even worse, the police. After scanning the shoreline, I couldn't see anything which was somewhat of a relief, even if it did not explain the stink. I began to wonder if one of the neighboring properties were having plumbing issues when something in the water caught my attention. I can recall it vividly. Since it wasn't full daylight yet, Parts of the lake were still in shadow, but I could clearly make out a shape in the water that seemed to be bobbing about. Reaching over, I put my glasses on, and immediately, the fuzzy shape became more clear. But I still had no clue what it could have been. You see, it looked like it was in the water. Whatever it was, it might have been some sort of dinosaur. Of course it wasn't, but that is the best way I can think to describe the shape of this thing. It looked, from the parts above water that I could see, it had a long neck, a small head, and a large body. It was far enough away that I couldn't make out any certain details, so I couldn't tell you where its eyes were, or exactly what color it was, although it appeared a sort of dark brown, or maybe gray. I could not see any limbs, but I suppose that they were under the surface of the water. It just sort of rose up from the depths of the lake, and somehow in doing that, stirred up the water, causing the smell. That's what I thought must have happened anyway. I wish I could have thought to have raced off and found my phone to take a photo. As you see, I didn't have it with me. First off, I'm not one of those people who are glued to their cell phone. And second, I don't actually like having it with me when I want to read. Too much of a distraction. I got the distinct feeling that if I dashed back into the house to get it, this creature would be gone. So, I just sat there and watched it for another few moments. There was nobody else around, as it was early in the season, and most of the houses that were used for vacations were still empty and I guess that people lived there were either still in bed or possibly too busy getting ready for work to be sat staring at a lake. After a few moments, it was as if the creature just decided it had had enough and slowly resubmerged under the water. I was still sat there, staring out. By then, the waters had settled and thankfully the stench had left. My husband was now back. He just looked at me, and can tell by my facial expression that something was up. I know what I saw, or rather I know I saw something out of the ordinary. I actually have no idea what it was, but there sure as hell is something living in that lake. I know, because I smelt it and I saw it. I never did exactly tell my husband, and I don't believe in lake monsters, but maybe an unknown animal could be living around. Everybody knows there are certain things to be mindful of in the sea. You wouldn't go swim with the sharks without protection. 
But it isn't just the things that we know about that we should be careful of and respect. After all, the ocean is so vast that we have no real idea what might be lurking under the water. But sometimes we get to glimpse at something that doesn't even seem possible. This happened to me and a buddy one day when we were doing some marine research of our own and we were deep out of the waters off the coast of Spain. We had been picking up some unusual readings on our sonar equipment and were feeling rather excited and interested to see what we might have come upon. Before I go further, I should note that I'm not an actual scientist or marine biologist. I'm kind of a freeform researcher. I have bought and collected equipment over the years, and I like to do research of my own, like I said. So it's become more of an obsessed hobby. Anyway, there had been reports by local fishermen of some strange sightings in the waters, and we were out here trying to see if we could discover exactly what they had been seeing. We were hoping it might lead to discovering a new species entirely, as ultimately, isn't that what all researchers hope for? So, when we actually started to go somewhere, we were on high alert, making sure that all of our equipment and devices were set up and peering into the waters. Then we waited. That happens in a lot of these situations. There is a bit of excitement and then a whole lot of waiting, like fishing. We're used to it, and you wouldn't know. Just when you're starting to think about calling it a day, the sonar reader started going mad, and something was coming up upon us, and moving very fast. The readings were showing that whatever creature this was, it was large, really large, and to be honest with you, we were worried for a fleeting moment that if it collided with the boat, it might have capsized us. Yes, it appeared that big. It seemed to be circling us, and I began to hope like mad that it wasn't some sort of prehistoric mammoth shark, as it was unlikely we would be able to present any research if we were in its stomach. Using the equipment at hand, we were able to see the mass of its body was far bigger than any usual creature around here, and also very, very long in length. And then, for just one beautiful and terrifying moment, this thing rose its head out of the water. And here's the thing. The best way I can possibly describe it was having a huge bulbous body, akin to something like a manatee. But instead of their placid demeanor and almost kind, curious face, the fierce and hungry look of a shark. Basically, this thing looked like a manatee, and a shark had made it, and this monstrosity was the offspring. It even appeared to have tendrils around its body. Can you imagine this? The full body, with the head full of angry razor teeth, and it kind of had a distorted face. It rammed the boat incredibly hard, and we rocked and took on the water. I don't think it rammed the boat with too much force, because we didn't capsize. I don't think it was trying to sink us. I think it was just passing through. Part of me thought that we should stay as long as possible and try and document this amazing sighting, film it, take as many photos as possible for any evidence. However, I'm also a husband and father as was my colleague. So we decided to book it and wrap it up. We fired up our boat and out of there we went. Luckily, it wasn't some killer shark that was hell-bent on following us and killing us. It did not follow us and when it resubmerged, we never saw it after that. There have been plenty of other sightings of this same creature by locals, but sadly nothing verifiable. One day, I hope to get out there again, but not without a weapon. I work on the docks, and I've seen some real weird stuff over the years, and unfortunately, even had the calamity of finding a body washed up on shore once. 
I'll never forget the awful and strangely sad sight. But it didn't scare me. It wasn't gross, like in the movies. But that's not what I'm writing to tell you about. On an early morning, I was down doing my usual, unloading from a docker that had come in from Europe and needed to head back as soon as possible. I was the only crew there at the time, and the workers with the cargo had nipped off to find some breakfast before heading back. It was still fairly dark, as it was so early, but that was fine. When I was aboard, I saw the waters on the far side start to churn up a bit. There are all sorts of things that live in the water. Most of them don't bother us, and we don't bother them any more than we have to. The goals are more of a nuisance than anything down below the surface. But I was mildly curious, as whatever was in there was just making a real racket. Then, I saw the strangest thing. I can only describe it as an octopus. I have no idea. I don't know if it was deformed or what, but it rose slightly out of the water. It was just like it was missing parts of its body. It looked malnourished or mutated. It was very strange. Is this making any sense? At the end of each of its tentacles, it seemed to be another weird appendage. Bear with me on this. Like each of the little suction cups had little teeth or little sharp appendages. The thing, not even 10 feet away was like nothing that I have ever seen or known to exist. I must have stood there, staring at it for several minutes. It didn't attempt to move any closer. In fact, I'm not entirely sure if it even noticed me, or if that was possible. It just spun around a few times, churning up the water so it was like a mud bath. And then, it vanished and shot back under the water. That was when I heard shouting and footsteps and heard the others returning. I stood there a moment more, but it did not resurface and I never saw it again. When I told a couple of my colleagues, the majority of them must have thought I had one too many beers the night before and was still hangover drunk. Things like this don't exist, but who knows? Maybe I saw a rare species of octopi that occupy these waters. Besides, my family's originally from somewhere in Scandinavia, and I come from a long line of dock workers and fishermen. So, my family and I, yeah, we've seen some stuff. That's my story. I hope it serves you well. I was in holiday in the Caribbean at the time, and if you've ever been there, you'll know just how warm and beautiful the water truly is. We were staying in a very expensive and exclusive hotel, which came with its own private beach access and area, and in one part of that beach was a secluded cove with excellent rocks for diving off of, if you were brave enough. I was out there one day with my sister, and for once, we were the only ones there, probably because it was raining. Now, in our minds, what on earth did it matter because you were going to get wet anyway? But I guess a lot of the guests preferred lying on the beach and reading, so they had all retreated to the pool area as that was covered. There were a few people in the main part of the water taking advantage of the waves, but it was just me and Cassidy. We were taking turns diving off the rocks and see who could get the furthest out and who could swim back the fastest. You know, that kind of thing. It was her turn in the water, with me lining up, getting ready to jump in, when I heard her shout. It didn't seem like a yell of distress, so I did not jump to go in and help, but instead stood on the rock looking down at her as I called. There's a mermaid, she called back to me. Being 15 at the time and her being 12, we were sensible kids and not too far from our parents who were up by the hotel bar. We were strong swimmers 
and they did trust us. I also thought that Cassidy was a little too old to still believe in such things like mermaids. But sometimes, when you are on holiday, you revert back to being a little kid. Like when we went to Disney, and she was still happy to be a princess. She was in no need to grow up too fast. I laughed at her and asked her if Ariel was there too. Laughing at my own joke, I dived in to join her. I asked where the mermaid was. So there I am, looking all around for this mermaid, wondering what Cassidy is referring to, when I see ripples in the water, followed by a very quick splash of what looked to be a tail. Now, when you have been laughing at your sister for making up imaginary mermaid friends, and then you suddenly see a splash, it did make me slightly apprehensive. It had to be a big, friendly fish, right? So, I added to her, what makes you think that she is a mermaid and not a fish? My sister looked at me, totally deadpan, and said she had a human head. More ripples, and then a closer splash, and I see more of the fish. It looked way bigger than I remotely am comfortable with, so I suggested to her, that now might be a good time to leave and head back to mom and dad. I can't leave her, she had told me. She wanted to be friends with her. I told her not now, and it was not the time or the place. The ripples in the water started coming closer to us, as if whatever was down there was coming right up to the surface. And then it appeared. If you want to think of it as a mermaid, fine but I'll always equate them to being mythical half women, but with a fish tail. This thing was almost entirely fish, but with a grotesque looking face and head. Yeah, it was humanoid, but it was ugly. I cannot stress enough how utterly terrifying it was. It kind of reminded me of a cross between Nosferatu's face and the goblins from the Lord of the Rings movies. I mean, it was ugly. The skin on both the head and the fish part were black and kind of rotted and gray looking. It certainly didn't look anything like Ariel. It had huge slits for eyes and a, sl and a small sunken in nose and mouth, which it appeared to open and close. But there were also gills on the neck where it appeared to fuse into the body. I have never been so afraid in my life. I screamed. And for a moment, I thought it might attack, but it merely backed away and then swam off. I'll never forget its expression. It was kind of like an uh-oh. I wasn't supposed to be seen. I made a mistake. If you can believe it, Cassidy was actually more upset with me that I had offended her friend than being frightened by its hideous appearance or the fact like nothing like that should ever exist, and if it did, should never be witnessed by human eyes. I made her come back to shore and the hotel, and I feigned illness for the rest of the trip, so I would not have to go back down there. And of course, Cassidy only being 12 wasn't allowed down there on her own. She never did mention it again, but I often still wake up, nearly 10 years later, thinking about that same thing now. It should have not been possible. I think we were lucky that day, as I truly believe there was something wrong, as that would be inherently evil. Something that should have only been too happy to tear us limb from limb. Maybe it was a mermaid, or maybe it was a siren. I don't know. I don't know too much about old tales or stories of the sea. Maybe it is the reason for unexplained deaths. I don't know but it was the most awful horrendous monstrosity I have ever seen, and not a day passes when I wish to God that I hadn't seen it. I was fishing with my uncle during a rather cold season when there was a slight mist hugging the surface of the Mississippi River. We've been out on the river most of the day, and we could feel that the air was starting to get colder with the way the sun was threatening to go behind the clouds. Without any warning, 
the line on my rod went taut. At first, I thought I'd hooked something stationary, like a rock. But rocks don't trash around like that. It was insane. Try as I may, I could not reel in whatever I had caught with my own strength. I thought for sure that I was going to lose the line, and possibly my rod. My uncle, ever the solution-oriented one, grabbed the net and got close to the edge of the boat as the thrashing got close. I wasn't able to watch as closely as I had liked because I was trying to keep my line from getting away from me. My fishing pole wasn't a cheap one. Neither did I want to catch like this to get away, whatever it was. My uncle thrust his net into the water, and for a moment, I couldn't make out anything to speak of. But I swear, in a flash of things, I saw a hand reach out of the white water and grab his arm. He yelled and staggered. I was so caught off guard that I broke my concentration and my fishing line snapped. I went to check on my uncle and he looked like he had just seen a ghost. I asked him about the possibility of a hand coming up out of the water and grabbing him. He denied it, very forcefully. But the truth was in plain sight and it was written even more on his face. I did not push the matter because I knew what I had seen. In fact, a few years later, with the help of a little bourbon, he brought it up and admitted what I had known all along. He added some details that I missed. The hand that grabbed him was scaly and had only four fingers with narrow black nails. He had messed himself on the spot. Another detail that completely got by me. It's funny because I'd always thought that monster stories didn't belong someplace as ordinary as the Mississippi. I'm one of those foolish people that does things that I probably shouldn't, like exploring underwater caves on a very amateur level. In fact, you'd be surprised at how many there really are that are undocumented. Most of them are far too small to even be worth anybody's time putting on a map, hence why they are undocumented. By far, the vast majority of them aren't very safe. There's really only one way to find out which ones are safe and which ones are not. The one discovery that almost led me to giving up what I do for good came to me when I started exploring off the coast of California. It was just a clear enough day that I could see the ghost of what I was looking for hovering under the surface of the water. I thought it might be a wrecked ship that still had some sort of buoyancy, but snorkeling underneath revealed it to be a small underwater cavern and a chasm beneath. I geared up and went in. Most caverns have a point where they either get bigger or smaller. This did neither. It was the same consistent width the entire time and the entire length that I was in. I started wondering what could make a natural formation of a long rocky tube. The passageway was so narrow that there was no way I would be able to turn around. I would have to move backwards when I was ready to leave. That moment came sooner than I expected. With my light ahead of me, I came around a large bend in the tube, and there in front of me was what I first thought was a fissure lined with strange rocks. But the fissure started opening and shutting, bubbles escaping slightly. The rock wall the fissure was set in started moving towards me. It dawned on me to my horror that I was looking at the mouth lined with teeth. It was all I can do to keep myself from panicking as I backed up at the most painful, slow pace I had ever been forced into. The mouth ahead of me wasn't very speedy, but it was faster than I and it was going to gain on me. When I finally made it to the edge of the cavern, I pushed off backwards with my hands and the mouth braced itself against the lip of the tube and it shot out at me with explosive force. The mouth snapped mere inches away from my face, the force pushing me back. I distantly realized that I needed to get out of the water 
because I would soon go unconscious. A feat that I had just barely accomplished. I have read about tube worms and other things, but I never read about them getting that big. Especially ones that had a mouth, like that with the hinged jaw. I'm lucky to be alive, and have been reconsidering my thrill-seeking habits. I tried talking myself into another expedition someplace, but I just couldn't bring myself to it. My grandpa had the unique privilege of going around the area that surrounds Loch Ness. Now, I know there's enough of these stories to fill an entire library, and this story isn't necessarily impressive, but it is special, at least special to him. He was friends with somebody who was an older gentleman when my grandfather was just a boy, a friend of the family, and he knew that my grandfather had an affinity for monsters and strange creatures of all kinds. And when you're that age, going out in the lock is enough to get you a thrill because you're anticipating the sight of the attack of the monster at any time. However, the monster never attacked, at least not in the way you thought. One afternoon, two of them had taken their lunch out onto the lock. My grandfather expressed the need to relieve himself. So, the two got up out of the boat after docking it and found a nearby place like a rock or a bush. While my grandfather was relieving himself, he swears to this day he saw something with a long neck and a narrow head come up out of the water, sniff about the boat, and eat what food that was there. My grandfather was so beside himself he almost forgot to pull up his pants. His friends could scarcely believe what had just happened, and my grandfather says that he was white as the clouds in the sky. The man never fully acknowledged what happened, and he never denied it either. My grandfather treasured that experience for the rest of his life, until he passed. My best friend gave up any kind of water exploration or scuba diving. He was completely shaken up by something that had happened when he went diving, looking for leopard seals. Now, I know what you're thinking. Leopard seals sounds like a pretty scary predator, but when they encounter humans, they're completely different. They treat humans like guests, and they often invite them to play and sometimes, in a sort of grisly hospitality, a leopard seal will try to kill a penguin for a nearby human. My friend got pretty good at finding where the leopard seals like to swim. He couldn't do it very long at a time because the temperatures of the water, but the times that he got to were memorable. The day came when the leopard seal tried to make friends with my friend down to greater depths. She would dive sharply down below, and then come up, waiting to see if you would follow. Technically, you could have, but you would have to be very careful, because that's where the waters got even colder, and would be dangerous to humans. Finally, he followed her one day, and she showed him something that he didn't think was possible, given the environment. Cold water fauna isn't unheard of, but she had led him to a place down below, where it was just absolutely thriving with bizarre forms of corals and animal formations that, as far as my friend knew, had never been discovered. I know that's an extremely bold statement, especially coming from him, who's a very credible and valid individual, but I honestly believe him. He forgot the discomfort of intense cold just long enough to start looking around. He was getting into a very strange patch of coral when he said this leopard seal friend attacked him or thought that's what was happening. She forcefully pushed him aside as the coral that he had been looking at writhed up and shot up with jet engine force. The extensions ripped through her body and spikes exploding from her back. Just like that, the animal was paralyzed or killed. My friend hoped that she was killed because she was dragged down into the ground, or some sort of awful mouth, he described it, took her. 
the experience thoroughly shook him up, and he has not gone diving since. He still tells stories about that particular leopard seal, and I could tell that he feels bad for what happened to her. After all, he feels she did save his life, and he won't fully disclose this exact location because he's worried others might try and find it. I prefer to remain anonymous because my family is mostly involved in different kinds of over-the-sea piracy. I'm sorry, but it's the only way some of us can get by. I harbor no ill will towards the people that me and my comrades raid and rob, but the world has left people like me behind, and I'm not ready to just roll over and die before I'm even 50. When you're already considered the scum of the earth, you will see and experience things that most people in this world don't. One of her better hauls had won us some scooping diving gear. We didn't know how to use it, and it would be several months before we actually did, because it meant that we would be able to investigate things that had already sunken underwater. One dive led to the discovery of what appeared to be an old tanker. I didn't think it would be likely we would find anything but my friends were eager to look inside just in case, as if they didn't have anything better to risk their lives for. There was a very peculiar thing on the ship. There was a large metal chest that had been bolted to the starboard hull, almost like it was something meant to stay secret, although it seemed to me that having something like that on your ship was about as secret as a pimple on your forehead. Two of my comrades went underwater with bolt cutters to see if they can get inside. Minutes passed by, and then an hour. We were growing concerned because we did not know how much oxygen that they had. So, two more of my friends went underwater with them. I sat on the boat and stared at where the wreckage had been found, waiting for some sign of life or anything. Fifteen minutes had passed, and I began to get more worried. I put on my own scuba gear, and I went underwater, not with the game of going where they went, but just seeing what was going on if they needed help. That's when I noticed a cloud of red water greeting me as soon as I went under. It was coming from the chest, and the lid was dangling. There was some kind of ropey slithering movement, and the unmistakable shape of a chewed up skull. The friends of my comrades and their families do not buy my story one bit. All they know is that they had left me and they didn't come back. But I swear, my story and I, it's part of the reason that I've been trying to get out of piracy. There's some things that simply aren't worth the risk. My uncle is kind of a blowhard. He has all his fancy stuff and he barely knows how to take care of it. Like his boat, he knows how to start it, but he has absolutely no idea how to maintain the thing, and his clumsiness follows him wherever he goes, including over the waves. We had gotten well over the water, and it was one of those things where he invited me out there just to show off all of his stuff. It's not like he hasn't given me the waterside tour of his estate. Admittedly, it is impressive looking back on the Florida coast and seeing his home rise like a futuristic white tower by itself, but it's not as impressive the fourth or fifth time. I was just enjoying being out on the water. So far out, he killed the motor and decided it was time to just enjoy ourselves. That had been my plan all along. I laid back pretending to listen to him talk about how much money he had made and what he was planning on buying. I was about to fall asleep when I felt the boat lurching slightly. So, I opened my eyes just in time for him and I to exchange the same look. I looked over at the side of the boat, just in time to see the hull of the boat, nudged by something that clearly had the body of your average shark but it had the arrangement of eyes that you would expect from a spider. It must not have been an accident, because when it surfaced, it started shooting sticky web-like strands at us. 
part of it got on my uncle's arm, and it was so sticky it nearly ripped off the skin. And there was a huge mad scramble to start the boat and get out of there. The boat then struggled against the strength of the silk, or whatever you call it. I don't know what the hell it was, but at last it ripped free, just a few seconds from land, and some of the silk must have found its way into the propeller blade. When we did get back on land, my uncle capitalized on the opportunity to phone out and announce that we had discovered some new species of animal. Apparently, the sticky substance was too similar in composition to things excreted by things like sea cucumbers, so he wasn't taken very seriously. Not that people were in any habit of taking him seriously to begin with. Anyway, that's my run-in with something I never experienced before in the ocean. And while it was a crazy experience, it still kind of scares me and keeps me from wanting to go out into the deep ocean to this day. I man a lifeguard station next to the coast off of Maine. There's just enough traffic of both people and watercraft that somebody like me and my team need to be nearby at all times. I've been looking into getting a different line of work ever since one particular incident when our little hub was being remodeled and updated and there would need to be somebody to spend the night there so as to make sure that none of the copper or other exposed valuable pieces would get stolen. After the working hours were over, I took advantage of the opportunities to just sit and stare at the water something I didn't get to do too much of when I was on duty, because there was always something to do, and something to always check up on. After a while, I noticed something in the water that I couldn't quite make out. It drifted into the setting sunlight at such an angle that I could tell it was the nose of a small boat that had capsized. My rescuer instincts kicked in, and I got prepared to go out there and make sure everything was okay. There's a half-submerged door in the boat, and I knocked on it several times to see if there's any way I could hear movement, or even hopefully, somebody might kick back. Took the extra step of putting my ear underwater and pressing it to other parts of the boat just to see if I could hear anything. There was nothing. That didn't mean people couldn't be unconscious in there. I got out of the water and went back inside. I was able to pick up my cell phone and call for emergency services when there was a single loud thudding knock on my own door. I can't tell you looking back now why I seized up. Something about it wasn't quite right. The feeling intensified when the knock came again, but it was accompanied by a very strange gurgling. It sounded deep and throaty and it almost made me want to vomit. There were several more knocks, and after that, I heard the sound of heavy wet footsteps trailing away from the door. I straight have been quiet for a few minutes. I worked up the bravery to investigate. I saw some very large wet and mighty footprints leading to the back of my door. I followed them to the water, where it looks as if something had come out of the water and decided to pay me a visit. That's the worst I'd ever slept in my life. Not only did I lock the door, I barricaded it. I wasn't sure if I would have had the nerve to get up and investigate if something like a burglar showed up to steal any valuable metals. I'm well over six foot and built like I was going to try out for Jersey Shore, if that tells you anything. The footprints, on the other hand, no, they weren't human, nor did they look like shoes. They were weird four-toed footprints, larger than any footprints man could leave. I am very disturbed from this whole ordeal, to say the least. <laughs>